So um, if you want to start a fresh patch, what you need to do is press load, and then the button is in it. So initialize, okay? And then you get out of the load screen by going wherever you want, but I'm just going to press load again, and we're back in the filter section. <clears throat> what loads up with an init patch is the wave, um, by default is the wavetable um, parameter. But I'm not going to start with wavetable, I'm actually going to start with waveform. So we're going to go over here to waveform. And this means that we're just using oscillator one. If we go over to the filters, the filter is completely open. So we've got no modulation of filters. There's nothing mapped. Um, and so if I just latch a note. Okay, we've got a nice saw wave. If I change the shape to a sine wave, triangle, different, different types of noise, it's quite nice. Okay, so rather than droning that out, what I want to do is just talk about some of the parameters for um, for this uh, kind of virtual analog side of things. We started talking about supersaws before. Um, what's really great about the virtual analog, which I've, I've been really kind of diving into recently, um, is that because there are six kernels, you can have, I, I believe for virtual analog, you can only use four of them. But essentially what it means is that you can take one sound, one droning oscillator, and then you can detune it against itself without having to use multiple oscillators, okay? So if you were to do that, say in Ableton's analog or any other synth, you'd need a couple of oscillators, or you might use the unison parameter or something. Um, what I'm gonna do here is just use the sine wave, and I'm going to drone this oscillator, and we're gonna go down an octave. So if you press oscillator, um, the oscillator button again, it brings you to the next page, which is the control page. And here's your um, pitch. Or if you press this button again, it means you're moving in octaves. Okay. All right, awesome. Let's go back up. If I press it again, or we'll press the timbre page, same thing. If I start moving my kernel count, you'll start noticing some stuff happening to the sound. Maybe tell me what you're hearing. Phasing, yeah, okay. And the reason for this is that we've got, uh, now I've set it to 3.4 kernels, which is basically three oscillators and a bit, all right? So you're fading in an os oscillator as you open up the kernels. And this detune setting down here is set to, if I just zoom it in, if I can. setting here says that it's detuned to 6.42 um, cents, right? No detuning, we don't get that, that phasing effect. Alright. Cool. So, if you're hearing this in headphones, I mean, those of you that are right in the center might actually feel that panning, yeah? Um, you get width immediately. All right, you can play with that width over here on this other side. If I zoom out again. Okay, over here on this other side is the degree of stereo separation. Okay, we're still hearing the phasing, but it's not wide. Okay, left, right split means it's as wide as it can possibly be, okay? So that's cool, but it's a sine wave, so it's not as interesting, right? Where things get really interesting, and this is why the Supersaw is used a lot um, in electronic music, is that if you use a, a rich shape, like a saw wave, I'm gonna take the tuning down and just bring up one kernel. So we're on one kernel, no detuning. <coughs>
massive sound, right? We're only using one oscillator, but it's got the ability to, to kind of stack up to six at the same time, which is awesome. A sound like that, a super rich, wide sound. Let's change the filter, actually. We'll change it to 24 dB. Cool. How about we do an arpeggiation of that? So I turn my arpeggiator on. We've got, let's do it in two octaves and we'll do an up algorithm. Okay. I'm going to turn it down and then just, I'll press latch. Does anyone remember what latch does? Yep. Hold it. And we're on arpeggiator. So I'm going to do, let's choose a scale. Throw a scale at me. I don't care what it is. Oh, let's see if they've got it. There it is. Booyah, Kasha. All right. Um, all right. You've got to press this play button to get the arpeggiator or the sequence of running. Okay. Can you see this moving a little bit? What's happening? Yeah, it's got a, a filter envelope that's applied to it, okay? So this is mapped um, by default, all right? So any filter envelopes are always mapped to filter one and filter two. The filter um, envelope one is always mapped to one and two is to two. Um, so if I go over to my envelopes here, let's just work with the amplitude envelope to start with. So I'm changing the decay, bring down the, the sustain, bit of release, why not? Okay, and now let's go to the filter envelope. Its amount is controlled here. And let's increase the resonance of the filter. Go back to the arpeggiator. Now we're on random. So it's pretty easy to get something interesting going. I'm hearing that, um, and this is what I'll do throughout these these sessions. Is we'll we'll start we'll start going, and then I'll the the sound itself gives me an idea about something that I want to do with it. So that particular sound, because it's quite articulate, it makes me think of maybe putting some kind of a delay on it or something, or maybe some reverb. So we're going to do that. Go into the effects. Usually, what I like to do when I'm playing with this is actually turn the effect off first, because otherwise it comes on straight away as soon as you turn it on. And I'll choose a delay. By default, the delays are synchronized, right? So you've got dotted here. Oh, I should say in the arpeggiator, my step length is um, their 16th notes, right? Okay, cool. So let's go back. What was I doing? Effects. Thank you. Turn the dry wet, the dry wet down. All right. Now I'll unbypass it. All 
All right, and then in the delay, you've also got some filtering, so you can cut out the high frequencies of the delay, or cut out the low frequencies. So that's sounding pretty good. Okay, 